Hey there YouTube, I'm Bubbins, and there are a lot of really expensive items in Final Fantasy XIV. The average player isn't swimming in gill unless you go out of your way to spend time growing your reserves. And oftentimes, items can cost upward of a million gill, with some reaching much, much higher sums. Today I wanted to talk about the most valuable items in the game. And before I get into it, I wanted to say that I won't be including mounts, which can be directly purchased from NPCs for 25 or 50 million gil. You can technically sell those on the market at a markup and make a few million gil, but rather than being truly valuable, it's more of a lazy tax. So for the sake of being comprehensive, I will show them and their value off at the end of the video, but they will not be included in this list. I've done a ton of digging and found 10 of the most valuable items on the American Final Fantasy XIV servers. I have used the average sale price, not the listing price, on Universalis. Please do leave a comment if you found more expensive items. With the sale rate being so low on a lot of these, it's not super easy to find them. I spent about two hours trawling through threads and websites looking for the rarest and most valuable items I could find. But I'm not perfect, so I may have missed a few things. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Listen, I'm not here to lecture people. I understand that Bajja is a grind, and a whole lot of people don't even want to start dealing with that, let alone get to resistance rank 25, complete the whole quest line, then running a 48 person raid and winning the drop from the final chest. But this thing is ugly. like. Look at it, why would I ever want to spend almost 17 million gil to add this to my collection? Like, I'm a completionist, but I mean, look at it. I'm never gonna use it, it's just a box to tick. The next item makes a lot of sense to me. Again, just like Bosja, Eureka is not everyone's cup of tea. On top of that, you need to have the know-how to spawn copycat Cassie, and there are plenty of players who just go around killing whatever everyone else spawns. Whatever everyone else does the work for. And spawning Cassie is a nightmare. She only spawns in blizzards and you need to kill at least 60 of her mobs to even have a chance for her to spawn. And not only is her spawn rate low, but the drop rate of the earrings is even lower and then you still have to win the bid to get the earring. There are threads where people talk about how they've been grinding it for hundreds of hours, being unable to get this. When your options are that, or spending 17 million gil, I get it. I really do. Welcome to the weirdest item on this list. The red onion helm originally dropped from Orm Vale during Final Fantasy XIV 1.0. And it has been available a few times since, but from most reports, it's no longer available in any way, shape, or form. That makes it exceedingly rare as the years have gone on, especially since it's more than a decade old. At this point, it's just a meme. Some ugly gear that longtime players value, and owning one is some kind of status symbol. Joining that club will cost you 18 million gold. The pinky mount is relatively new, hence the high price point. You can only earn it by popping a time-worn Kambira skin map and having it open to the Excitatron 6000. Making your way through the RNG that is all of those doors and having it drop from the final chest and then winning your need roll makes it really rare. The maps are cheap, just 5 to 10,000 each these days, but it's the time and effort that keeps most people from wanting to grind it out. Another treasure map reward, the Golden Beaver is only available in the Shifting Oubliettes of that, I'm not going to say it, I'm going to butcher it, I'm not going to say it, the, the Shifting Oubliettes of that. It is one of the two portals that can spawn after finishing a time-worn Zoner skin, Z Zoner skin, Zoner skin map, and having that 50-50 split of different portals only serves to make this minion rarer. Combine that with the fact that in this portal you're dealing with a roulette wheel and not just choosing correct doors and the odds just really suck. Whereas now you can go back to the market board and buy an untradeable authentic eastern cherry tree, that was a mouthful, for 
Back in 2015, these trees were a reward from Little Lady's Day and were 100% tradable. The new ones no longer are, and with housing demolition, people quitting the game, and everything else that goes on, the supply of marketable cherry trees continues to dwindle, driving the price up over time. There's no real difference between these 27 million gill trees and the ones on the market, so feel free to just save the cash. Unless you're swimming in gill and want to save $5, I guess. This is easily the most expensive fashion accessory in Final Fantasy. They are one of the ultimate rewards for the shared fate in bi-color gemstone feature. If you want to earn these wings for yourself, you'll first need to complete 60 shared fates in every zone from either Endwalker or Shadowbringers. With 6 zones each, that's a total of 360 fates, just to be able to purchase them. And again, that's just for one expansion, Lord help you if you want to do both. At that point, you'll unlock the vendor in either Radzahan or the Crystarium. There you can buy bicolor gemstone vouchers for 100 gemstones each. The Fallen Angel Wings can be purchased from Edelina in Mordona for 500 of these vouchers, meaning the item costs 50,000 bicolor gemstones. You only get about 14 gemstones per fate, meaning this requires you to complete about 3,500 fates. You thought that was it? <laughs> no. The Wyver Mount also costs 50,000 bicolor gemstones. How does 7,000 fates sound? While the price does fluctuate, the Wyver and the Fallen Angel Wings are usually the same price given they take the same amount of effort to farm. Twenty fifteen was apparently the year of really valuable things. This Valentine's Day reward from twenty fifteen has not been brought back to Mog Station like most other items have. Because of that, it now goes for just under fifty million gil on average. However, in the last few months, it's fetched as high of a price as ninety nine million gil. For the most valuable item on this list, you have to go back even further to 2013 to find it, the Starlight Barding. Originally a part of the Starlight Celebration, just like the Paramore Barding before it, this one has never been brought back. Since it's been a decade, this one on average costs just over 50 million gil. Though two months ago, there was a single sale for 120 million gil. Some people are just swimming in cash, huh? So that's the end of the list, the most valuable items. I said I'd return to the gold amounts. Here they are. The Resplendent Vessel of Ronka costs 25 million, sells for 28. Chrysomalos costs 50 million, sells for 40 million. That makes no sense. The Gilded Mikoshi sells for about 6 million more than it costs, and the Magitech Avenger G1 sells for about 9 million more than it costs. But they're not rare or anything, it's literally just tricking someone into buying it. And that's the list. How many of these elusive items do you currently own? If you found this video helpful or fun, please make sure to leave a like or subscribe. Really, really appreciate it. I appreciate all the support. It really makes a difference to me. And if you want to directly support the channel, there's a Patreon linked in the description below. Or you can become a member right here on YouTube. For now though, I think that's it. I'll see you next time.